Hello friends, this video on chemical bonding part 24 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before watching the video, please make sure that you have watched part 1 to part 23. Let's take sp3 hybridization now. So in sp3, we have 1 s orbital and 3 p orbitals. They hybridize and they form 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals of equivalent energy and shape. Right? Example, if you see, this is my 1s orbital, 1p, 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 right? All these merge and they hybridize to form, this is my sp3 hybrid orbitals. You are see there are 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals, right? And all are having equal energies, correct? And these have 25% s character and 75% p character because there is only one S and 3P involved, right? And it is tetrahedral in shape with 109.5 degree as the angle, correct? So, this is all about sp3 hybridization. Let's take some examples on that. And also note that carbon with single bond goes for sp3 hybridization. So, let's take some example for this. So, let's take a carbon example of methane CH4. So carbon, if you see the electronic configuration will be 1s2, 2s2, 2p2, correct? This is the electronic configuration of carbon. So I'll uh, put the, put this, create this box for the valence uh, electrons, valence shell, because that's what I'm bothered about. So 2s2, 2p2, correct? This is the electronic configuration for carbon. And if you see the carbon, carbon looks like this only. So if you see 2s2 is 2 electron in the s orbitals and 2p orbitals have 1 electron each. That's the look of carbon atom. Now what will happen? 1 electron will move from 1s to p and it will go to sp hybridization. You see once again I will show you. It is all 2s, 2p, 2p, 2p. 1 electron move from here to here and it all became sp3 hybridized. So you see now, now I got 4 sp3 hybridized orbitals. Let's see in demo. So I have 4 hydrogen molecules coming towards this carbon and it became like this. Now if you see, I got 4 sp3 hybridized orbital. That means all are 4 sp3, for all are sp3, sp3. And if you see all of this p orbitals are involved, so I don't see extra p orbital here. All the p orbitals are involved, and I got four sp3 hybrid orbitals, all with equal energy and one electron each, right? And this hydrogen also came with one electron. Since this orbital, sp3 hybrid orbital of carbon, and this s orbital of hydrogen both had one electron, so they overlap. Let me uh, make the hydrogen electrons red. Right? So this overlap. Here also if you see, this is S orbital of hydrogen overlap with sp3 hybrid orbitals of carbon. Because both had single electron and that's what the theory says, overlap theory. If they have uh, unpaid electrons in the orbitals, they'll overlap. Here also if you see, S orbital of hydrogen and sp3 hybridized orbital of carbon overlap because they have one electron each. Here also they overlap. And that's what if you see, the structure of CH4 is tetrahedron. Experimentally also they have found this. And please note carbon also forms sp2 hybridized in case of ethene and sp in ethyne. So carbon forms sp3 also, sp2 also and sp. We will take both these examples now. Just I want to explain the same shape using the Vesper theory also. If you draw a uh, structure of or Levi structure of CH4, you will find that carbon is not having any lone pair. So it is a case of zero lone pair plus four bond pair. So Vesper theory says that if I have a molecule with zero lone pair and four bond pair, it has to be tetrahedral. That's what the shape of CH4 is. Right? So using Vesper theory also we can get the same shape because the Vesper theory says that if I have a molecule with uh, the central atom having zero lone pair and four bond pair 
That means it will give a tetrahedral shape, and that's what shape of CH four is. Let's take some more examples of sp three hybridization. So nitrogen is uh, has atomic number of seven. So electronic configuration is one s two, two s two, two p. We'll consider the outermost valence cell. So we'll have two s and two p three. In this fashion, this is my two s will have two electrons and two p will have three electrons each. Let's draw the shape of nitrogen. So this is the outermost I am drawing. So this is my nitrogen. Two s, two electrons, and there are three p orbitals. Each has one electron. Correct. Now what will happen is it will just go sp three hybridization. If you see here. There is no transfer of electron; it just went sp3 hybridization. That's all. Let's see how it comes. It is like this. So in this case, if you see, the first sp3 hybrid orbital is filled with two electrons. The second sp3 hybrid. Let me write sp3 in all this case. This is sp3. So this is sp3. So we got four sp3 hybrid orbitals, right? The first sp3 is filled with two electrons, so it won't go for any uh, overlapping or no bond formation, no pairing. This sp3 orbital has one electron. This has one. All these three has one electron each. See, one, one, one. And this guy, the one in the dark green, has two electrons. Now the hydrogen atoms will form a bond with this because hydrogen atoms also have s orbitals with unpaired electrons, right? So they'll form the bond. Correct. Hydrogen uh, electrons are green in color. You can see that they form a bond. That's what if you see the shape also of uh, of uh, NS three. It is like this. I have my this is sigma bond, sigma bond, sigma bond, and I have one lone pair. And this shape is exactly what I can get from Vesper theory. Correct. You see the Vesper theory also. It predicts the same shape because it has one lone pair. Here, if you see the lone pair, and I have my bond pairs here. Let's take one more example of sp3 hybridization. Let's take water. So, water in a water, I have oxygen will go for hybridization. So, oxygen has atomic number of eight. That means one s two, two s two, two p four. We will be bother only about this part. 2s2 and 2p4. So let's draw this. So I have two molecules in two atoms in two electrons in s orbital and four in p orbitals. Correct. Now what will happen is let's draw the structure also of water. So I have uh, outermost this is 2s orbital, right? It has two electron. Then this is my p orbital in the blue color has two electrons, and my two more p orbitals in green color I made because they have one electron each, right? See, these are all p orbitals, this and this, but just it had two electrons, the other had one electron, so I have put different colors so that you can understand this. This is two s, two electrons, two p in blue, two electrons, two p in green, one electron, two p in green, one electron. This is how a oxygen molecule looks like. It will go for sp three hybridization without any transfer. You see, this was the case, and instantly it will go for sp three. Hybridization, correct? You see, just like that, it will go for sp3 hybridization. Now, if we see the way it works, is it will go for hybridization like this. In this case, if you see this, I got four sp3 hybrid orbitals, but out of that, my two sp3 hybrid orbitals have two electrons each. If you see here, two electrons each, and the other sp3 hybrids have one electron each. So these guys won't go for pairing. Only these two orbitals. These are all my sp3. This is sp3. This is sp3. This is sp3. All are sp3 hybrid orbitals, but two are filled with two electrons. It won't go for any overlapping. Each two will go for overlapping, and that's how the structure of water is. If you see, there are two orbitals like this, and by Vesper also, it is the same structure, right? Sp3, sp3. They are these are my bond pairs, and these are my two lone pairs. My lone pairs are like this, and my bond pair. 
Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.